Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and this is... Uh, this is his daughter, Autumn Garibay. Hello. Uh, and today, we're going to talk about an unfortunately very dark day, I think, in the 2020 U.S. presidential primary uh, race. Uh, it is the last of the standing um, candidates uh, who are not retirement candidates, retirement yeah. presidents, uh, who are not trying to be retirement presidents. Um, so, uh, do you want to say what happened today? Yes. So, uh, Tulsi Gabbard has suspended her, uh, political campaign, like literally every other candidate, um, save, uh, Biden and Sanders. So, exactly. yeah. Uh, and she endorsed Joe Biden. Yeah. Which is shocking. Absolutely shocking. Crazy. Yeah. Talk about like, you know, looking like a non-traditional candidate and then turning out to be so, so traditional, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, what are your first thoughts on this? Oh boy, kind of uh, yeah, here we go. Um, okay. actually, there's one bright spot in this it raises, uh, it raises my opinion of Andrew Yang. So now I can say that Andrew Yang is the best of the quitters, like, <laughs> <laughs> because, um, you know, if because here's the thing no one lost. Every single person surrendered, and I, I, I hate that. Like I, there was no reason to give up. Like these are, high, you know, it's so clear that you can just sit and wait, and there'll be an event which will allow you to surge forward, right? Like I feel like that's a very clear. I said that three months ago. It happened. I think it's coming. To, you know, Bernie October twenty nineteen is going to have another echo. We don't know if it's going to be for Bernie. We don't know if it's going to be for Joe. We don't know if it's going to be for Donald Trump. But, like, this is, you know, this is the way the world works now. Like, you can't, you, basically, if you buy an old car and that's your that's your main driving vehicle and you use that for your most functional, important tasks, uh, it's pretty ridiculous to think that thing's going to function every day when you take it out of the garage. Like, this is crazy. Uh, the best, the best description I ever heard of this was um, Joe Rogan, and I think he was quoting somebody else, but he's like, you don't take a flickering flashlight into a dark wood. And that is all we got left. There's nothing but flickering flashlights to choose from. Is this thing working? Like, and I, I'm just shocked. Like, uh, but one thing that is really nice is, like, I was really fascinated by Tulsi. I'm no longer fascinated by Tulsi. Uh, hanging in for a week longer. Does not matter. She folded like the rest. Click, click. Here's a folding chair, just like every other folding chair on the on the stack. Um, and what really amazes me is what caused this. Like that is the one, you know I've watched this so carefully, and just paid so much close attention, and I cannot tell you why these candidates are backing out from clearly some of the weakest, literally and figuratively candidates we have ever ever had like th these are these people are so beatable it's not even funny yeah yeah well, that's a that's a good question why would she do this um and i think my uh one possible reason i'll um spitball here but um i think it was biden's announcement um her his vouch for for president because i think that her um stepping down has um much much increased her uh chances it has pretty much eliminated her chance of, um, being the next president, um, but, uh, definitely increased her chances of being vice president, and therefore yeah. maybe next, next president. Yeah. Um, uh, because, uh, as a, if, like, a, a few days ago, um, in choosing a, a vice president, I would be like, oh, why would I do you, uh, choose you? You're one of my competitors. She's no longer that. Now in fact, she's, she's clearly in, in the running in for for uh for vp right which again i think is incredibly important at this point right so so the vps right i can't possibly be elizabeth warren right there's no joe joe biden has no reason to pick her right i i don't think so i don't think it's impossible um may i ask was she also one of the ones that Step down, then endorsed Biden. Uh, that's a I great think point. That's probably yeah. also like she did one of not the qualifications she she's looking did for. Him. Not, Do you like me? <laughs> she did not endorse Biden, and she quit after. 
right? right? Yeah. So, so one, there's a really, really strong... But see, here's the crazy thing is, you would have thought... I was thinking that Amy was told, hey, you're going to get... The, like, we, right. we both were like, oh, hey, Pete or Amy, it's one or the other. We don't know which, you know what I mean? But then the other thing is, if, like... Is it possible that he promised them both? And mm, no, I don't want to say that. Uh, no, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna conjecture that, right? But I think it very was likely that he went to Amy, and I thought he had went to Amy and said, "Hey," especially considering that he had prom- he now promised that he would chip pick a female vice president. That he had went to Amy and said, "Hey, you're gonna be my VP. Quit now." And, and that totally makes sense. And it also makes sense that Elizabeth Warren stuck in, crashed out, didn't get the votes, got frustrated. Totally get that, right? What? there's It makes no sense for Tulsi to do this now because that promise should have already went to Amy. Or that means that Amy went out for what? For nothing? Yeah. For nothing? Like, I can't imagine that she would do that. Um, or the other thing is that the influence that that the blue power base is bringing to these conversations is so incredibly high that we don't really have a we don't really have an understanding of it that might yeah. be the case yeah yeah and I, I feel like it's it's tempting to be like oh is it going to be Tulsi or Amy but um as we've uh talked about it it could also just be total wild card we're not even talking about um but uh i um but i'm t- almost tempted to say so, hypothetically, if um, Biden j- did choose um, Tulsi Gabbard as his vice president, um, what would your, be your opinions of that? Uh, uh, yeah, so, okay, all right, so, I, yeah, open communication, right? Um, I think all of us are going through a lot of change right now, and I've had an exasperating day, and I am... I feel like this is a punch in the chest. I feel like my wind is out. And the reason why is I was genuinely looking forward to voting for Tulsi in April. I was like, oh, good. I don't have to vote for one of these retirement presidents. Now I literally need to choose between Bernie, Biden, or Trump, right? And I don't go with that old saw, you know, the lesser of two evils. Nobody, I don't think any of these people are evil. Like, uh, Biden and Bernie have served their country for decades. I recognize that service. I don't think they're evil. And I don't think Donald Trump's evil either. But I definitely think we are now choosing between the lesser of two lessers. And so, to come and say, do you, you know, I feel like I'm just coming to a meal and it's saying, hey, do you want gruel? or porridge, or, you know, oats. It's just like, what the heck? Like, it's just, this is so saddening that it's hard for me to get excited about about what's about to happen. And the reason why is I think this is a mechanic script deal, right? Like, this is going to be a base deal. This is going to be a second deal. And what are the ramifications of this, right? Because... We're, it's. I would say we have a 99% chance that we're going to have a woman president between 20 and 2024. But the problem is, who's going to celebrate it, right? In that, it will literally, it will almost certainly come from some dark happening. And if we don't have a dark happening, and we have one of these three sad sacks as our president for four years... Like, so I just really feel like I have the wind just punched out of me today. I guess, like, and so Tulsi, you know, I thought she was a fighter. She's not. She's a quitter like the rest of them. So we just have two retirement presidents, Donald Trump, and then a bunch of quitters, right? That's And, and the quitters don't matter. You can't vote for them. Or it doesn't make any sense to vote for them. Um, and it, it's this is incredibly dark. Of all three of these, honestly, I would, um, who would I choose? Uh, oh boy. Wow. I can't, yeah, I, I don't think I would choose any. I hope, I hope Biden doesn't choose Amy, Elizabeth, or Tulsi. They're all a bunch of quitters that he defeated. 
I would much rather him spin the Rolodex and pick a woman who's out there doing, you know, on it. This sounds nuts. I would choose Tilda Swinton. I like her work. She's an, she's fascinating. She's an interesting artist. And the reality is what's about to happen is pure chaos. It's all like, this is just chaos. I, I don't see any, like we are in it now. Like we are in one of the most unusual times we have ever been in. And rather than choosing someone who's going to protect the nation, we're literally choosing somebody that the nation is going to need to work really hard to protect. Which is like, that's, it's literally flipped, right? I have, you know, when you, when you are of, you know, a, a the, these people are of the age where they, where people caring for them is the focus. It's, you don't go to an 80 year old person and say, care for me. This doesn't make any logical sense. Help me. Am I, is there yeah. any hope I'm not seeing? I, I hope so. Um, and yeah, it does it does seem particularly grim because I think this was definitely surprising to us. Um, oh, yeah. Tulsi Gabbard uh, seemed like a, an incredible woman of great and intelligence yeah. and da 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 da. Um, I, <laughs> I mean, this, uh, maybe it was a mistake of, of um, looking the, this up quickly before um, this this video, and it seemed like every headline was. Uh, Tulsi finally backs down her, um, like, unrealistic dreams of presidency. And it, so uh, it was it was even more grim seeing that we were the only ones surprised by yeah. this. They were, um, the, um, holding on when she had, I'm guessing she still had two delegates, um, is, um, was incredible, but not, uh, as we can see from the, the rest of the candidates, very unusual, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely upsetting that um, she she is, has joined um, those. Uh, the the picture is a little more cohesive now. When you look up um, like Democratic primary, you'll see Biden and Sanders um, lit up with with all their delegates. And then the rest of them are literally like in gray. Yeah. It's um and and it used to be four people in gray and then Tulsi. Um and uh and now it's just all gray. Um yeah. and uh so <laughs> I, I really am trying to find the the hope in this because I similarly do not like the idea that um Biden and Sanders are our only Democratic uh candidates left. Um, uh, as, as we said, um, vice presidents, uh, are important and I, um, have a, a bit of hope that they will choose good vice presidents who can govern and maybe represent and care for America a little more. Um, but, uh, that's, that's not how elections should go. You yeah. should be voting for the, the first name on the ticket, yeah. not the second. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but uh, actually one good thing is... One thing that is nice, um, and one good thing I think is there is the yeah maybe this is the maybe this is the bright spot. So Biden now Biden's choice is the only hope for America, right? And honestly, I'll tell you right now, I have absolutely no interest in Amy, Elizabeth, or Tulsi. All quitters, all same same brand, all made of the same tissue paper, cardboard. Right, clearly, you know, not going to hold any weight. Didn't have enough weight to stand up to the establishment. They're certainly not going to be able to handle the heavy, heavy problems that we're looking at. Right. Um, so, but we have, we do have a nation that is filled with brilliant women. Right. And so, with that, maybe there's a renewed hope that the short list can bring forward somebody that we, maybe Stacey Abrams becomes more important now. Um, you know, there, uh, Oprah is still an option. Uh, and Oprah is really, you know, the other thing is also with Biden's connection to Obama, there's a possibility that maybe the, maybe the person, the other thing is since you're not electing the person, right? All the traditional, all the, all the frustrations that dinged and held back. Every every intersectionality issue 
that held back every other candidate is now off the table, right? Because everybody's just going to check for Biden, and then you and then you're going to get your other president for free. So you can go, you can do whatever you want, right? Because they're not getting elected, right? And so I really felt that the way America works is you are going to need to go woman president and then woman person of color president. Totally wrong. You shouldn't have to do that. You should, you know, Kamala Harris should have been able to waltz right in just like anybody else, right? But I was thinking the elasticity of history is going to require that each one of these be shattered one at a time. I was clearly wrong. Biden can choose anyone he wants, right? And so, for, as long as she's a woman, there is. Oh, and by the way, I just in case anybody's wondering this, I don't think I don't think he has any intention of breaking this promise. Because if he breaks this promise, sure. it would be H E double hockey sticks to pay. Like he cannot break this promise. So yeah. Now, what do you think? Do you think that? Would you be excited to see Amy, Tulsi, or or um, or Elizabeth uh, in the slot? Do you think there could be a good, a brighter future? Um, yeah, I would be. Um, and yes, while it's uh, discouraging to to see them suspend their candidacy, pretty much um, quit this presidential race, um, I would be interested in seeing them in the role of vice president, particularly because of how closely we've been following this, um, this, this race. And you, it, it feels almost as though you, you know them. So while I would, um, while, um, Biden could absolutely, um, bring someone up, a total wild card, we don't know, but would absolutely be a great, uh, female vice president. Um, I'd be in support of that. Um, but, it would almost, uh, for people who are, are more recently getting in, into politics, um, like I am, it, it'd be a stranger. Um, and, uh, I, I think I do have a little more, uh, goodwill for, for the quitters than, than you may. Um, just because I, I think we recognize all of the political influence that, um, has gone behind their, their decisions to suspend their campaigns. Um, and, uh, so, yes, they hold the, the responsibility for that, but what it means is we will not, they have almost given up the right to be voted for as president. I don't think that's giving up the um, ability to be someone's vice president. Um, and, uh, in, in fact, as I said for Tulsi, I feel like it's almost opening up that possibility, um, because it, it seems a bit closed off if you're, um, still competing with, um, the people you'd like to work with. Um, so, yeah. It's... That seems like a very nuanced, reasonable position. <laughs> 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 Which, I don't go for those. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, but I, I definitely see where you're coming from. Um, I think, you know, so I do have, so you have some hope even in the traditional candidates. And to your point, we could be looking at a, a, uh, we, we have a, the one of the, one of the best things that we're walking away from this is there's a distinct possibility. There's going to be massive change between 20 and 24 if Biden is elected. Um, which there's a distinct possibility now, right? The, the before this COVID-19, Trump was untouchable, right? But his whole strength is the economy, and the economy is about to get, it, it, yeah. you know, so, so, yeah, so Biden is, he's got a really good chance, and I'm telling you, this is mechanics grip deal all the way. Base deal, second deal, Biden ain't going to be president. <laughs> Even though he, he'll be elected, right? He, he has a distinct chance of being elected. I don't think for a second he's going to be the president for long. A month, three months, not even a year, I doubt it. Uh, and there's so many ways that, you know, traditional, you know, life exit, a malady. And the other one is just step down. Like, this has happened. Like, the Emperor of Japan, just like the Pope quit, the Emperor quit, a U.S. president can absolutely quit. There's We've, we've had massive precedents for this. So... Uh, but that means we got a high probability of having a female president between 20 and 24. So let me uh, ask for some clarification on that, because 
we have a, a high probability of a woman president if Biden wins this election. Correct. Yes. Um, I, but, how, but how high is, is that? Um, oh, I, th- I think it's quite possible. Oh, okay. Because Trump's, his, his armor's made out of the economy. That means right. he's going in with no armor and, frankly, no weapon. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not saying it's a lock, but we got a race. Right now, I will say it's going to be a pretty boring race because I don't wear like either one of the horses in it. Right? Yeah, in fact, this... I feel like we're watching miniature ponies. Right? Like, yeah. So. Yeah, we've mentioned before this is this is like your sports season, and yeah. it's like um, if two this is like watching, football teams went to the Super Bowl. This is like <laughs> watching the team that used to play the Globe Trotters play the other team that played the Globe Trotters. This is bad. All that's my opinion, and my some of my opinion. Um, <laughs> Apologies. Didn't expect you to approve me. But regardless, thank you very much for watching. And have a great millennium. Yeah, indeed. Thank you.